Today I'm going to show you how to prime EVA foam so you don't have a tragic wardrobe malfunction at one of the cons. A few years ago uh, I was working on a project it needed a lot of masking done on it uh, so I could spray some effects and as I was peeling back my masking tape and it was a low tack tape uh, my sub structure to my uh, finish peeled right up and right away you you realize some things stick to foam really well and other things don't stick to foam well at all because of that i created uh, several different stick lists to help me know what sticks to what here is one of mine uh, that i use often i have a scale of one to five that i use one being very poor five meaning that uh, when you paint on this surface with this product, it becomes one with the surface. You can't take it off unless you destroy what's underneath it. It's that strong a bond. Observing uh, the stick list, uh, you'll see right away that contact cement uh, sticks well to most things. Crazy good. So I created a contact cement wash that I put on most of my builds, and this solves that problem. Anything that I apply on top of the contact cement sticks crazy good. Why won't this wig come off? First of all, it's important to know that EVA foam from manufacturer to manufacturer is not made the same way. And so I can get two different types of EVA foam and different products will stick to it differently. So when you're making your stick list, you might want to add the different types of EVA foam that you use and then try your different products on it to see how well they adhere. Uh, today I have some high density foam that I'm using and I added some commonly used products on top of it. Uh, we have Quick Seal, we have Angela's acrylic, Hexflex, uh, some Liquitex acrylic, and just some gesso. And I'm going to show you how well it sticks. I have uh, the purple tape in my studio and the purple tape is really sticky stuff. And I usually use this to test the different products. So I'm gonna take some of this. Uh, let's go over the quick seal first. Rub this down and pull it up. And you can see, wow, it just comes up crazy easy. It doesn't stick too well at all. Uh, try this out with the Angela's. And you can see the Angela's is staying down, but it is peeling up, but it's not peeling up in a sheet. So that would probably be a number four stick. Uh, the quick seal would probably be a number three on how well it sticks. We try some hex flex, it's some black hex flex. Peel that up. And that's just coming up in one big sheet. So uh, that would probably be a, a number three on my list. The interesting thing about Hexflex, if I use a low density foam, it sticks like a five. On a high density, it sticks uh, on a, a three level quality. So uh, again, it just depends on what type of foam you're using. <clears throat> Here we go on Liquitex acrylic. This is some silver acrylic. Peel that up. And that is about a three too. That's peeling up really easy there. So that's about a three. And now, the last, do some gesso here. Pull that up, and that looks like maybe about a four. It's coming up uh, a little bit, and so if I worked at it, I could get it all up easily without damaging the surface, but it's gonna take some work. So the gesso and the Angela's was about a four on the stick list, and the Quick Seal, the Hexflex, and the Liquitex acrylic, about a three. Now I'm going to show you uh, same foam, same products, uh, but with a contact cement wash put on it. So let's go over the quick seal first. Same sticky tape. Rub it on there really, really, really good. Pull it up. Nothing. It sticks crazy good. Let's do it again. 
crazy good. Nothing. Angela's. Rub it down really good. Pull it. Again, sticking really good. So these would be fives. It's sticking that good. It has bonded to the surface of the foam. Next, the Hex Flex. There we go. Very stable. And number five also. Oh, too much tape. <laughs> Let's get rid of some of this tape. <laughs> okay, next. We're going to do the Liquitex Acrylic. Rub it on there really good. Pull it. So, so far all of these sticking very well. Let's do the gesso last. Here we go. Rub it in there good. Pull it back. Awesome. All five products that either were a four or a three in its stickability has now become a five. They have all bonded very well with the surface of the EVA foam. Now when it comes to priming EVA foam, there are two products that I use. I can use Plasti Dip or I can use a contact cement wash. Uh, I've tested both of them and the contact cement wash works better in almost all cases. Uh, in some cases, the Plasti Dip doesn't work as good. Uh, sometimes it doesn't help at all, but the contact cement wash works good 99% of the time. And so that's normally what I use before I start putting any type of product on top of foam after I've heat sealed it first. Uh, then I'll put on a contact cement wash and I'll tell you how I make my wash. It's pretty easy. Uh, you'll have to go down to Home Depot and you'll have to pick up some DAP Weldwood contact cement. You can use barge, but uh, I don't think it's needed. Uh, this product tends to work just as good when it comes to putting on a primer wash. And then I picked up a canister of xylene. Xylene is a product that thins down contact cement and uh, it works very well. The ratio I use is one part contact cement to four parts xylene. I put this wash in one of these contact cement jars, which I really enjoy using and it makes it easy uh, to use. And I usually apply this to my props and costumes before I start putting on any finish at all. So after I heat treat the foam, then I'll put a coat of this on it. And the reason why I like this is because it goes down so flat that it just looks like the surface of the foam, but everything sticks to it really well. Let's go outside and put some on some foam and I'll show you how I apply it. I am going to be using as a brush a really nice brush and you might think you're using it with contact cement I'll ruin this brush but you don't. This is what I do is I just set it back into my contact cement wash just for uh, a few seconds move it around and my bristles start to get soft again. Uh, it's so much better than the brush that comes with this jar. Uh, shake up your contact cement wash and I'm going to use uh, my good brush because it just performs so much better when I put this on. So I'll just work it on like I would uh, a paint. Go different directions and make sure there's no dry spots. Get those edges. And you can see it soaks into the foam really easy. And then as it evaporates, it'll preserve the quality of the surface of your foam. So there won't be any ripples, there's not gonna be any brush strokes. And now we can leave this outside and uh, for about a half hour and it'll dry rather nicely. Okay, this piece of foam that I have right in front of me was done with Plasti Dip as a primer and it does a pretty good job not as good as the contact cement uh, this was some uh, quick seal and you can see it's peeling up probably uh, quality of a number three stick uh, it did help the um, 
Angela's and the Hexflex and the Liquitex did a really good job of making those stick better. Uh, on the Gesso, it was starting to peel up a little bit, maybe a four stick, but it even helped that also. So what you might want to do is create your own stick list and also try out the contact cement wash and tell me what you think about it. I hope this tip helps. It has helped me a lot over the years. And, th and this is when I say goodbye. Good goodbye. I thought that, that last one was okay. <laughs>